of um, uh, YOLS. You might have heard of YOLS. It's a cool lightning app that, that's been there since the start, pretty much. Um, I think he also came up with the term submarine swaps, and today he's going to talk about lightning loop. Um, well, I'll let him tell you what it is. And just so you know, there might be a slight delay and latency between uh, us in the virtual world and Alex in the real world. So keep that in mind and be patient. And yeah, that's it. Oh, one more thing you should know. Um, this is being recorded and it's being streamed live. So when you're, whatever you're saying here, keep in mind that it might be um, published for everyone to see and hear. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, that's it. And for everyone watching um, at home who's not with us in VR, uh, you can join us. You, you might be seeing the link in the in the stream right now. You can join us. We're at uh, t.me slash VR Bitcoin on Telegram. That's t.me slash VR Bitcoin. And you can join the next event. We're actually going to have a great event com coming up uh, just on Tuesday, a Socratic seminar, which should be awesome. Okay, so without further ado, I'll move aside and I'll let... Alex start. So give a great, large, huge round of applause for Alex and let's start. So where we are at today is that the Lightning Network has tons of all these, has tons of channels but we've created a network that is mainly used for experimentation. And we've set up these limits on the channels to say, we're not gonna put in unlimited amounts of capital to this network. We're not gonna do payments that are in a, of unlimited size. We're gonna set these limits on the, on the network. Um, and people have set up stores, they've, they've created applications and within this uh, kind of safety framework of these smaller amounts, um, we are, already experiencing kind of like a, a vibrant ecosystem of lightning applications and lightning users, but it's still just getting started because we have all these limitations on and we're still building up the software. Um, so the thing that I would say in 2020 that is going to change in lightning is that we're going to add this Wumbo concept, which means that we're going to take off these safety limits and we're going to say the default is going to be on you. You are going to have to be more responsible for your own security and we're going to be less, uh, maybe patronistic about uh, telling you, you, should, you need to keep your capital off of Lightning, and that's more on you to figure out. Uh, but that also means that uh, people are going to need to think more about their own security. Like if, if you're keeping maybe $100 on your Lightning wallet, your security might not be that important. But if you're starting to keep a million dollars on your Lightning wallet, then it, that's something you really you need to think carefully about need to think more about their own security. Like if, if you're keeping maybe $100 on your Lightning wallet, your security might not be that important. But if you're starting to keep a million dollars on your Lightning wallet, then it, that's something really you need to think carefully about. Um, and I would say that even with Lightning, uh, kind of like taking over the, the majority of your commercial transactions, I would still recommend using a cold wallet for your, for your holdings. And if you're running a, um, if you're running a store, I would still recommend using a cold wallet for uh, all the money that you don't need to necessarily keep in your hot wallet. Um, and I would also keep an eye on um, channels with peers who are not routing peers. Um, if you don't need to keep money with peers uh, that you don't have to, it represents a uh, kind of a an, an open-ended security risk. So you have this, this money in channels that is inactive, it can't, can't be used for anything. So this is something people are gonna have to start thinking more of as we scale up, as we add, as we go into millions of dollars. Another, another thing that um, I think that we're seeing uh, with the movement from Lightning, from being an experiment to more of a system that people can integrate into their daily lives is that we're seeing that reality is a, is unbalanced. So what that means is um, people who are sending in lightning, sending over lightning are not necessarily sending in a bi-directional way. And in a lightning channel, if you want to use it infinitely, you need the, the capital to flow bi-directionally. So uh, once you've depleted the capital in your channel going out, you, if you want to continue to spend, you need the capital to come back in that same channel. 
um, but that doesn't represent the reality of how people do spend. So there's certain types of people who are spenders. Um, they load up their wallet with some money from the chain and then they spend down that wallet and then that's it. They can't spend any more, so they're going to have to create a new channel or maybe use Lightning Loop. And uh, the same applies to the merchants and exchanges. People are paying to them, and they're not paying. They're not moving a lot of their expenses to the Lightning Network. So what's happening is that their channels are becoming depleted in the inbound direction. So people are paying through the channels, paying through the channels, um, and then they're, they're becoming saturated. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It still represents an aggregation over the like naive case of just making a payment on the blockchain. So you can still fit in maybe 10, 100, 1,000 transactions, even if it's completely completely unidirectional. But it's not as ideal as it could be. And um, it's representing a cost to the people who are, are using this. So they're having to go to chain more, that they're having to deal with that, that, those issues. And uh, one thing that, that can, can help somewhat is to move the capital around between your channels. So if you have one channel that is depleted, and if you have one channel that is not depleted, maybe you could move uh, on the Lightning Network the capital around so that you would have both channels be um, not depleted. But it does not solve fundamental problems of, of uh, getting overall depleted um, because you're just shuffling around your your existing liquidity. Um, so, it, and it will especially be uh, less helpful once we have multipath payments where you can use multiple channels together. Um, in that case, you will uh, you'll have more flexibility to receive or send, but you won't be able to um, fundamentally change the flow of where the capital exists between you and your peers. So. This is something that I thought about for a long time um, when I was working on the submarine swap swaps project originally. I thought we're going to have all these problems. Um, we're going to lose some of the benefits of the chain when we go to the Lightning Network, and it's going to be unfamiliar. And um, there's going to be you know, a migration process of figuring this out. So what a submarine swap does is it allows you to go from the chain to Lightning or from Lightning to the chain. And that's something that can help you with um, with balance with these balance problems. So if you are uh, seeing your channels all fill up because you're a merchant and people are just sending you tons of money or being super successful, you need to get that money uh, to push to the other side of your channels if you want to continue to receive. And um, but you don't want that money to just be lost. So the submarine swap allows you to um, use the same principle of, uh, of light that, that Lightning uses to get your money back on the chain. And on, on the chain, it's not subject to the same flow restrictions that, um, that are, are restrictive to circular rebalancing. So um, after I made submarine swaps, uh, I joined Lightning Labs. And Lightning Lab, at Lightning Labs, we created this uh, product called Lightning Loop. And Lightning Loop is a bit different than what I worked on originally. And the, the, the main difference is that it's oriented towards um, bridging funds out of Lightning, um, because that is the main um, issue for people is that they want it, they, they've, they've, they're a merchant and they've received so much money that they need to get it back onto an exchange. They need to get it into their cold wallet. Or they're a merchant and they're seeing that they're useful channels that are delivering all the sales to them are becoming depleted. And now customers are having more problems paying to them. So that's become the most uh, used feature of Lightning Loop is to push funds out of Lightning channels so that they so that Lightning channels can continue to be used. And um, this is a non-custodial service. The whole concept is non-custodial, um, which I think is pretty important uh, for um, people to build on it. And uh, I can kind of like give a high level overview of, of why it's, uh, it's trust minimized, like how it actually works. What is loop, loop actually doing? Um, so I have a little diagram at the top here. Um, so what happens when you do a loop and a loop out where you are using your uh, lightning funds to pay to an on-chain address? What happens is that you initiate a swap by creating a secret. 
an unguessable secret. And that's what you do every time you make a uh, lightning uh, invoice is that you're making this secret. And then when, when you make that secret, you take the hash of that secret, the one way hash of that secret. And in loop, you give this hash to the server and you say, Hey, loop, here is this hash and I'm, I'm going to lock a, a payment to you. So I'm going to send you a payment loop and it's going to be locked to this hash. But unlike a normal lightning payment, uh, the receiver doesn't know the secret. And so the loop server as a receiver does not know the secret. So the loop server can't just take this money because it doesn't know the secret. That's, that's the requirement for lightning payments is that the receiver knows the secret and that's how they can unlock the, um, the received lightning payment. The secret's also called the pre-image. So what the loop server does is, it, is it, once it has this hash, once it has this payment, this payment that's locked to it, is it says, okay, I've got this money locked to me and I can see that if I knew the secret, I would be able to take the money, but I don't know the secret. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, make a on-chain payment back to you or back to wherever you want. And it's going to actually have the same hash. And this time, um, if you want the money, you have to pre present a secret that is corresponding to that, to that hash. And that will allow you to take the money back to yourself. Um, but there's also a clause where uh, maybe you don't reveal the secret. And in that case, then it's going to, then this is going to, this uh, smart contract is going to time out and it's going to say, well, now I can take the money back to myself because you never revealed the secret. So in the normal case, the loop server will, will continue with the loop to say, okay, here is this on-chain uh, output that you could take. So here are some chain, there's some chain funds that you could take that correspond to the money that you sent to me off the chain. And then the user is going to say, okay, that looks good. I've got some money on the, on the chain that correspond to the, to the outgoing amount. And I, we, I will reveal the secret and take the money to my full control without the timeout. And once they do that, once they reveal that secret, that allows the loop server to say, hey, I've got this incoming payment that's locked to this hash, but now I know the secret, so I can take that money. And so that allows for uh, this trust minimized flow where there's only these two outcomes, either uh, the user revealed the secret and they, they created the secret in the first place, or the whole process times out and the loop server uh, is able to take back the money. Um, and then there's also a timeout on the, on the other side, whereas where the user um, can get back their money as well, because it, the loop server will, will hold on to that forever. Um, and this, this is also basically how lighting itself works. It, this is the HPLC concept. That's how uh, we can uh, move funds across uh, multiple hops because all these hops are, are using the same concept of this uh, hash time lock effect. And it allows loop to work uh, over the network. So you don't even have to be connected to loop. You can connect over the network. And as long as the loop gets its secret and hash from some peer, um, that's enough. And this really allows you to spin down your channels. That's, that's what this loop out is doing, is it allows you to spin down your channels so that you are, are able to get inbound liquidity, so that you're, you're able to um, either push out funds that you don't want to be holding in your hot wallet, or you're, you're able to now receive um, in the opposite direction for future uh, received payments. And the, like the main point here is that we, you've locked a payment to the loop server, but you created the secret. You created the pre-image. We don't even know it. So it's impossible for us to take that money. It's just, it just it's, like, it's like as if we didn't know the private keys. So if you saw an address on the, on the blockchain and it's locked to a, an address, you can see the, the public part of it, the address part of it but you don't know the private key, so you can't take the money. The same thing with the loop server, that the, the money that you've sent to us in, in, the, in the first stage is, is basically to us, it's as useful as looking at on the blockchain and looking at an address. It's only after you take the money, meaning that you reveal the secret, that we're able to take that money. Okay, so what this represents is really a liquidity market. Um, so 
the Lightning Network works differently than uh, a regular peer-to-peer -peer network that works on altruism um, because it requires committing capital to and committing capital to, to different people in different amounts. So we can't make a peer-to-peer -peer network where everybody has unlimited capital because Bitcoin has, is a scarce resource and um, there's a cost to holding capital into, into a hot wallet. And so there's this concept of inbound liquidity. And all inbound liquidity means is that somebody else on the network is holding their money in their hot wallet and they are holding it in a channel with you. And right now in the Lightning Network, you can't just walk up to somebody and say, I want you to hold some capital in a channel that's assigned to me because that wouldn't scale. You would, you would have all sorts of people just go and, and demand capital be locked to them and uh, there wouldn't be enough capital. The Bitcoin would be too limited. So that's where the market comes in. And the market says, oh, well, let's have a way to recompense people for holding this capital. And, you know, we don't want to just have it be a one-time expense because capital is moving around all the time. We don't want to just say, um, every time I want to get some capital, I have to go to the, I have to go to the blockchain and, and I have to arrange somebody to create a new channel to me. Uh, we want a system that is more efficient than that and that um, allows capital to move as much off chain as possible. Um, so what Loop does is it says, you know, you can come to us if you want inbound liquidity because we've got some inbound liquidity. We're working on that problem. And you can do this um, swap with us where you will trade your, your off chain funds um, and we will give you on chain funds. And so we're giving you inbound liquidity and you're giving us a swap fee. So the Lightning Loop is a paid service. And you also are paying fees um, to the routing network. So the, the other people on the, on the chain who are kind of making a similar deal with you that they're saying, you know, if you move funds in this direction, then um, you're going to have to pay this amount. And uh, of course, you also have to pay because a uh, submarine swap is, is half on chain and half off chain. You're going to have to pay a, an on chain kind of a, a fee as well to, to the miners to help uh, move that capital around. Um, so what this market, what are you buying in this market? You're buying this inbound liquidity, meaning you can, you can receive payments, which is super important as a merchant. And you're buying another thing, which is that you're buying a lower risk of your hot wallet uh, being compromised. So if you're a merchant who is just receiving money all day, so let's say you're selling coffees, there's no real reason that you need to keep the money in your lightning channels, unless you're making lightning expenses, but I think we're at an early stage for that. Um, so the, it's like if you have a cash register and your cash register is just filling up, filling up all day. Well, at the end of the day, you're going to have to uh, empty out the cash register because you're not making so many payments from the cash register. Um, and having a, an infinite cash register, like if you're just piling up money on the floor, that's a security risk. So what you're also doing when you are buying inbound liquidity is that you're buying lower risk for yourself. and. Um, because we have a lightning as a flow network, meaning that the capital is only being shuffled between between peers. Basically, you're, you're, this is a peer to peer marketplace where you're you're talking to your peer and you're saying, "What if I push the risk over to you? And what are you going to charge me for that?" And then we can have a competitive marketplace where people can say, "Oh, well, I'll charge this amount for this risk." And I think as we see this network mature, especially in 2020 and forward, um, we'll have a specialization. of concerns. So um, people who are really good at being merchants, they might not really care about being great at security, but there'll be some people who aren't really good at merchants at being merchants, but they're really good at running uh, lightning nodes. And so we will have a, a, a marketplace figure out uh, who should be responsible for being the merchants and who should be responsible for carrying the routing, who should be responsible for carrying the risk. Um, and, uh, you know, it sounds like, oh, fees, I hate fees. I don't want to pay any fees. But um, I would say that if you look at the current market and um, if you think about it conceptually, we're not talking about the, the, the most gigantic fees here. Um, so if you look, um, I think a, a normal routing fee that would probably be on the high end would be 10 basis points, meaning 0.1%. Uh, so uh, you could, you know, if you operate a coffee shop that's doing, you know, half a million dollars in business a year, you're only paying maybe $500 at that point, 1% in uh, liquidity fees. 
So it won't break the bank. And this is a, you know, an open market process to anybody in the entire world. Okay, so um, there's even more benefits um, to Lightning Loop um, that I think we can expand on and that you can use right, right, right now. So um, I talked about a bridge and in the bridge concept, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring the benefits of, of one system to the other system. So uh, I talked about like bringing the concepts of the, 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 the benefit of the blockchain that, that do doesn't have these flow restrictions. Like you can just send anything to anybody and you know, as long as it's a sufficient amount, they don't need to have a route, they don't need to have channel set up. So that's a great thing about the blockchain that the submarine swap allows you to do is it, it, get, it allows you to access that benefit with your lightning funds. But um, the, the reverse is also true. So um, the lightning network has these great properties that you can access um, using the, this bridge. So one, one, one benefit is that it has a better privacy profile. I'm not saying it's anonymous, but um, when you send an on-chain transaction, you are really, I mean, you are literally broadcasting to the entire world, like where the money is coming from and where the money is going to. And um, that's just a hard problem from the start to figure out like, how do I get privacy out of that? Um, but if you move it through the Lightning Network, um, you know, we have this non, we don't have a gossip system. We don't have a broadcast system to tell everybody where the money's coming from. So just from the start, it's easier to figure out how to make that more private. And um, it breaks that like traditional link that people are looking at when they're trying to compromise your privacy on the chain. So the money comes from somewhere on the Lightning Network and then it goes out on the chain, uh, which helps you uh, kind of obscure your UTXOs. Um, so another thing that I think is really beneficial here is that um, you know, we're still using on-chain transactions to do these loops, but we are, we're still, we're getting uh, aggregation benefits. So even if you operate a coffee shop that does a loop out to move all the, all the funds back, even once per day, instead of doing a hundred coffee sales as all as individual transactions on the blockchain, now you are getting similar benefits, but you are only doing maybe one transaction on the blockchain and even maybe less than that, depending on the server, the type of submarine swap that you do. Um, and then uh, I talked about before, which is that um, regular normal blockchain funds, you know, of course, everything is still in smart contracts, but uh, the lightning as it stands, lightning smart contracts as it stands today are more difficult to keep hold, to keep super secure. And that's something that, um, you know, most funds don't really need to be hot. They don't need to be uh, in live active channels connecting to the network. So um, that's something that you can access with a submarine swap is you can access this cold, cold wallet in both directions. So um, if you want a submarine swap to go from your Trezor, your, your cold wallet, and or you, you can uh, arrange with somebody else and say, I'm going to pay you this, this money on the chain from my cold wallet that I've, I'm keeping super secure. And then you are going to go make that off tape payment for me. And that's, that's what we call a loop in is that we will uh, be responsible for doing the, the lightning, the lightning payments and having that lightning uh, hot wallet risk. And you will be able to keep your money just as you've always had it in a secure, uh, in a secure uh, operation. Okay. So, um, the other thing I want to talk about um, is kind of the future of Lightning Loop and, and uh, the, the evolution of Lightning Loop as we, we've moved from alpha to beta. So we recently uh, announced an, a big upgrade to Lightning Loop um, and we've, we've moved the service into the, a beta service. And um, the big feature that we've, we've introduced is that we've added this batching concept. And uh, you know, people talk about batching and it's a little bit hard for me to explain. Like people, I think people, are very familiar with the idea that if you do batching that you're getting this chain savings but i don't know if people exactly understand what it means what it means is that if you have a transaction and you can attach more outputs that are to you know payments to more addresses that you care about to that transaction then you don't have to attach a lot of extra data to it um, so you're what you're doing is you're getting kind of like an economy of scale from making it making a transaction and batching is 
you know, SegWit is, SegWit is something that any wallet can implement to get some improvements, but batching is something that normally only big wallets can implement to get to get uh, on-chain savings, fee savings, because it requires that you, you actually care about sending uh, more payments to more people. Um, but that's something exciting that we can offer with Loop is that we can allow you to join into a batch with other, with other people. So other people who are making on-chain sends, um, you can share a transaction with them and you can do it in a way that you don't have to trust a custodian. And uh, that's a service that is live on Lightning Loop today. Um, you can you can run that, um, and it, the, the there's a, a big upcoming feature in uh, L and D, um, which is that we're going to allow multipath payments. And when we when we allow multipath sends in L and D, we're going to uh, allow you to actually batch major changes in all of your channels. Like even if you have a hundred channels, we're going to allow you to um, to, to uh, use all of those hundred channels to make a payment. And what that means for Lightning Loop is that you can loop out instead of just doing one channel, instead of rebalancing one channel and that being one on-chain transaction, or one output, it's going to be a hundred channels or all, you, as many channels as you would like as, you, as there is routing capacity for, uh, and that is still going to map into one on-chain transaction. Um, so that can be more efficient than uh, even splicing or uh, lots of other uh, possible formulations for how to do uh, liquidity rebalancing um, for maintenance on the Lightning Network. And even into the farther future, um, there's this concept where we can um, create multi-party channels. Um, and normally the, the, the problem with multi-party channels is that um, as you add more participants to the multi-party channel, you get the risk that one of them is going to disappear um, or not be active, and that, and whenever you have a lightning channel and one one peer is not available to sign, then the channel is is not usable. Um, but what we can do with Loop is we can make these temporary multi-party channels, and that that allows us to even get rid of a lot of the on-chain overhead that we have today with with um, with the way that submarine swaps work. We can get rid of HTLCs, and once we have um, Schnorr and Taproot. Uh, assuming that soft fork is deployed, then um, we can fold together the signatures of all the different parties in, in, in a swap, and we can say that that only represents one uh, signature, one public key, which adds additional privacy, and it also uh, drastically improves the uh, price of a swap. And um, I've done some other presentations on the math of this, um, but uh, how it works out, even without multi-party payments, is or multi multi path payments is that um, you can be, be five times more efficient with your chain usage in the ideal scenario um, of using these temporary multi party channels. And um, you know how, how does that work out? So instead of spending um, five dollars on a tr on a transaction, you can switch to using this you know theoretical future uh, super batch loop. And um, you would, instead of spending five dollars, you would spend one dollar. Um, which can, can make it very attractive to people who are trying to send a bunch of money on the chain. And even if you're not, and even if, you know, this is only people only applying to people who really need to do a bunch of chain sends, it's, it's lowering the, um, the cost for everybody because we're using the on-chain, um, resources more efficiently. So, um, lightning loop is, is something that you can try out today. Um, it's an API. You can build your own client completely. It's, you know, it's a trust minimized API. So that's something that you can build, you can integrate into your application. And we also have a reference, um, client implementation, um, ride the lightning is working on an in integration. If you, if you're right, if you're a ride the lightning user, um, there's a PR for a jewel, if you're a dual user, um, or you can just, you can just go to this website, lightning.engineering slash loop, and you can download and get involved in trying it out and, um, it also works on testnet if you want to try it on well, if you want to try it out on testnet. Okay, that's all I have. I think I'll go to the YouTube. All right. Thank you, Alex. This was awesome. And we're gonna take.
some questions in a moment. Bear with me for 10 seconds. Okay, guys, so we have some sound trouble with uh, some audio problems with, um, with Alex. So what we're going to do is I'm going to allow you to ask questions and you should try to keep them very short because we're going to type them over to Alex so he can answer. So please try to have uh, short questions and we'll give it a shot. JCS face. You can okay, start. so my question is uh, one of the um, questions I get a lot from people that don't understand. I know you say you have to make the question short. The question is the short version of the question is what do you think is the um, let's say the fees were $100 per transaction. What do you think is as cheap as we could get it per person in a world where the network was very busy and people didn't want to pay obviously $100 to open a channel? So um, the question is, let's say that fees go up to $100 per transaction. What's the cheapest that we can open uh, channels? What's the cheapest price we can open channels at? Um, so one interesting thing about Lightning Loop is that the, the product of a loop could actually be um, a new channel opening. Um, so. Uh, that 5x rule still applies. So let's say that you, um, you're you trying to open a channel and the price is $100. Um, well, you can still receive the aggregation benefit and, and instead open your channel for $20. And the thing is that if other pe even if other people do that, that's bringing down the cost for everybody. Um, so, and that's only one optimization. There's other optimizations that we could make. Um, through softworks and also through different channel constructions. So another way that we could have for a channel is that you could have you could share a channel with other people. You could say that it's, it's not just a channel for one person; it's a channel um, maybe uh, for uh, ten people. So you know, then we've cu we've cut this down, right? We said, okay, we started with a hundred dollar transaction that included two inputs and two outputs, and that was a lot of data. So we cut it down to just one output using Lightning Loop, and now we, we're, we're down to twenty dollars. And then we we went to twenty other people and we said, well, um, let's make sure that we have good liveness guarantees, and then we you know maybe we have some soft work to figure out um, what happens if if there is an assigner. Um, and we've come up with some kind of futuristic channel thing. So uh, we shared the channel between 20 people. So now we, you know, we've only paid one dollar to open this channel. Um, and uh, the, the the cost of, of going up in, in, like uh, incentivizes everybody to try to figure out like, oh, how can we just do it as cheap as possible? And then it also incentivizes you to use the channel for a long time. So already we have channels that are open for nine months on average. That's like even in the testing phase when channels are closing due to bugs and stuff. Um, and you know, even at super cheap fees where you're not even really incentivized to keep your channel open that long. Um, so uh, I think uh, we can um, have like, a, you know, a channel that is, is easily open for an entire year and maybe you're spending uh, one to $20 on it, even in the worst, you know, even in a case like $100 for a transaction. Um, and let's see, Waxwing, you're up. Hi, can you hear me, Udi? Yeah. Yeah, so my question is just, um, uh, what's the anonymity set of the on-chain uh, component of Lightning Loop currently, and what will it be after Taproot uh, and Schnorr, ideally? Um, so the question is, What's the anonymity set of um, concurrent lightning loop? And what would it be under Schnorr and Taproot? Um, so uh, kind of what I described earlier about privacy benefits, um, there's uh, you know all sorts of ways to look at privacy. Um, so the, the starting way that I would look at it is what's the, what's the privacy set of, what's the anonymity set of lightning itself? And you want a huge anonymity set, and you want an anonymity set that is, 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 a, is a quality set. You don't want to be tied up with people who you could just be categorized along with. You want to have it be very diverse. 
so that uh, it's difficult to discriminate against you. Um, and I think that the, the anonymity set for Lightning as it currently stands is actually very high quality because there's a lot of different types of people using it and it's not just a certain category of, of, of people. And technically speaking, what's happening when you're doing a Lightning loop is that you're paying us over the Lightning network. So um, depending on how you're doing that payment, how you're running your node, um, all that's being seen from a privacy perspective is that there's this payment coming in from the Lightning network and you know it's not gossip to everybody in the world it's it's um someone from the lady network you know paid us and um so that's a pretty good story um there's another aspect to the lightning loop as far as privacy goes which is that uh, once you do that payment you're, you're spending it on chain and you're doing it in kind of a way that can be can be seen visibly um so an hdlc will go to chain and it would it's going to be um you know, an unusual type of HTLC. So um, you'll be like grouped in with all the other people who are using Lightning Loop. Um, and that's not a huge number of people. I mean, it's certainly lower than the, the Lightning Network itself, and it's, it's much lower than the overall set of sets that are being sent around. Um, and so what, you, and it was mentioned like, okay, what is it gonna be like under Schnorr and Taproot? And um, that's something that I kind of touched on before, which is that um, right now it's not, it's kind of visible on the chain to see that, that these loops are happening. So even though you don't have that connection from the input to the output, you can still see that this output is like an unusual type of output. Um, and that's something that we can use Schnorr and Taproot. Even potentially we can use ETDSA, it's just more difficult. Um, but that's something that we can do with, with Schnorr is that we can make this, make a new type of multi-party multi -party channel construction where when you um, execute the loop, it actually doesn't even look uh, much different than any other kind of transaction on the chain. And then the only privacy hole in that case is um, the service provider itself. Um, so uh, the, the, I guess, and the other benefit from Schnorr um, that is expected is that uh, lightning channels themselves would become more private because instead of being obviously a channel with uh, two of two multisig, they would just look like any normal send as a, any normal like pay to public key hash type of send. So guys, I'm gonna take one last question because the delay we have between us and Alex is pretty, pretty difficult. So I'm gonna take one last question. Please make it short. Um, Jonathan, you're up. Hi, I wanted to know a little bit about the organization. How many people are working on this full time? Um, have you received outside funding? And and what's the what's your, I guess, goal or or definition of success? Um, you know, it's really still very early with Lightning Network, so it's interesting to see the ecosystem that's being built around it. Um, at this stage of where we're at, how do you define success? Question is. Um, from Jonathan, um, how many people are working full time on Lightning? And is there outside funding? And what are the goals? And or how would Lightning or Loop be defined successful? Um, okay, so how many people are working full time on Lightning? Um, well, there's two parts to that. One part is maybe there's three parts. Um, Lightning generally as it stands right now is built on Bitcoin and how many people are working on Bitcoin? Uh, lots of people. Um, like I'd say there's, you know, Square Crypto and there's uh, Blockstream has contributions and uh, all the people who, you know, are building implementations who are submitting um, patches and uh, like feedback upstream to um, the Bitcoin protocol. Um, there is uh, Lightning protocol development um, that's one big part of Lightning development, and I would say um, there's a few major teams and then some um, less um, large teams. So that might be like 20 people, um, 25 people working on the protocol side of things uh, to be generous. And um, as far as the rest of development of Lightning, I think one super important thing 
that we need to think about is that it's not just a protocol and you build a protocol and then that's it. It's, you know, the protocol is more like a blueprints. You know, you then still need to build out the, you have to do the engineering, you have to build out all the tools. You have to make this thing useful by making great apps, by making it usable for people. And for that, I would say there's a much larger set of developers. Um, I think certainly hundred. And if you like look on the um, LND Slack, we have thousands of people who join the Slack. Um, and it, it's not just developers, it's also all the people who are thinking of new ideas and creating content. Um, so I would say thousands of people are working on it. I, you know, I don't know how many full time, but probably a, a good size number, although it's not, not gigantic. And um, the question is, you know, is there outside funding? Well, there's no token here. There's no, you know, lightning foundation that, you know, printed up a, an ICO. So um, the funding is really from people who are uh, expecting that this is a network that's going to grow and going to be useful to people and that that usefulness is going to translate into revenue. It's going to mean that there's new businesses built on this platform. And um, that's the kind of funding that we're, 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 that we're at. It's really chasing utility and revenue in the short, shorter terms. And it's not just uh, airdrop money. It's not just printing money um, to try to keep this thing going and get more people on board. It's people trying to make this um, a good solution for people's problems. Um, and that's how I would also describe Lightning and Loop as, as successful. I wouldn't say, you know, it, it necessarily needs to be in one, used in one way or another way, um, except that we want to solve people's problems. So um, if, it's, if it's successful, I think we will be, you know, solving tons and tons of problems and um, that it will be sustainable. That, that the people who are right now depending on funding to keep the development going that they are using the revenue of the, all the useful services that they're, that they're able to provide to keep going. And Loop specifically, uh, also we need to have sufficient volume in order to deliver those, those big batching benefits. Um, so there's actually just like a, a, a play number that we need to, to get. Um, yeah, so that's part of why I'm trying to talk to people is to get more people to use Lightning Loop so that we can get that batching going. Um, yeah, so, uh, this is my first VR chat. So that was, that was really great to be here. Um, thanks for all the questions, really good questions. Um, and thanks for watching.